What's going on, y'all? So listen. What's going on, y'all? So we back again for another episode review of Married to Medicine. This is season 10, episode 5, Resurrection Rejection. Um, I know last <laughs> the last video I said, girl, I ain't finna be on here long. I'm not finna be on here long because I don't know what was going on this weekend. I don't know what was going on this Sunday. Y'all could like this episode, but the two episodes this this ep uh, for Real Housewives of Potomac and for Married to Medicine, I ain't like them. <laughs> I ain't like them. Okay, one was a little bit. One was too deep, too heavy, too uh, and then this one is too freaking fake for me. Okay, like I don't know if it's because Phaedra is on here and it became so freaking theatrical and you got Phaedra and Quiet linking up their friends and all of that stuff and everything. And I'm sitting here by the end of this episode. I'm like, I can see exactly why Phaedra and Quiet are quote unquote friends because they're two stunt queens. Okay. And it was just given very much theatrics, dramatic, fake shows and stunts and all of this stuff. And I'm just like, come on now, come on now. Okay. We get quiet finally. I mean, like, at the end of the day, I get it. I get it. Quiet, I will understand you having an issue with the fact that you feel as though the people are not on your side and that everybody has kind of, like, turned on you or that's what you feel because they're friends with Sweet Tea and they're still friends with Gregory. But when y'all got divorced and everything, they were still friends with him regardless, okay? And you were still cool with them. But I guess since the girl is into the group now, you have an issue with that or whatever. Okay, I'll give you that because, you know, it's like, whatever. Because, you know, my history with my ex-husband and all of that stuff, whatever. But my whole thing is this. I'm not finna come on TV and make my whole storyline um, so far be make it or, or, or have them edit and make it seem as though I'm pressed over this new girl. Okay. I have, I'm, I ain't going to say bitter, but it's coming off like you got an issue and you, and all that we've been talking about is you and this girl and his ex-wife and, 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 and you want to say that you're over stuff and I get it. I get it. If you over the relationship, be over the relationship. That's one thing. But what is your animosity towards Sweet Tea? The talking about her. Granny, we feel some type of way because she just comes off some type of way. And at the end of the day, I don't even dislike the girl, okay? She ain't done nothing to me. She's just real goofy to me. That's just what it is, you know? And she just, I just, I'm, I'm uncomfortable because of the simple fact that she kind of look like Toya. That's just what it is, you know? But at the end of the day, Sweet Tea, regardless, we could put all the jokes to the side or whatever. That lady ain't done nothing to nobody. That lady ain't done nothing to nobody. She put her true intentions out there. She want to, with Gregory, she want to give him a baby and she want his money. Okay. You know, that's just what, what she want access to it. Uh, what? <laughs> I mean, Quad did everything except for the one that had a baby part. And my whole thing is, you don't have no issue with her. You have no issue with her, but yet you're mocking her. You're, you're, you're talking about, you, you bring her, uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't even care even if my friends were friends with this person. I would not be sitting around talking about her wedding, talking about this with her, talking about that with her, going to her bachelorette party. And again, I get it. It's entertainment, production, set it up. This is what you got to do in the script and all that stuff. But I will control my own goddamn narrative because I won't want people thinking that I, I got some type of issue or I'm pressed or, you know, I'm thinking about this girl all the time because this is what they want me to do. No, I would have to put my foot down and say, no, I'm not going to do this because I really don't care. Because if you really don't care, you don't have to say you don't care. You just don't mention it, you know, and then you want to feel like, whoa, it's me. The girls don't like me or I'm trying to understand why they put me on the outs and they do this and they do that. Baby, quiet is a professional freaking victim at this point. Because it's always what y'all do to me, what y'all do to me, what y'all do to me. But what did you do to them? You're not innocent. And I do like quiet to a certain extent. But at the same time, we got to call a thing a thing. Okay? You're not innocent in none of this. You did stuff to them. They did stuff to you. And vice versa. Like, come on. And 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 I, I just, I'm just not, ugh, the new girls coming in, Phaedra, you coming in with all of this stuff. It's just... It's ridiculous. I don't know. Like, the show was good. The show is still good. But 
putting Phaedra on here and doing all this stuff, I don't know, it just became real extra comical and really, really non-serious and everything. Um, meanwhile, you see this whole situation with Simone and her, um, and Cecil. I don't know what they're not to agree on. <laughs> I don't know what there's not to agree on. Baby, we are professionals, okay? We both got our careers. We both put forth the effort. And I, I don't see a problem with wanting to see your kids do the same thing and put in the same freaking work. And if you can't do it right now, you're going to have to do something, okay? You're going to have to make it look like you're doing something, you know? Um, you're not just going to be lounging around. I'm not going to be paying for every freaking thing. And that's the thing. They about to be paying for their apartments and stuff. Baby, I understand generational wealth. That's cool. That's great or whatever. But I appreciate generational wealth when the other person on the recipient, on the receiving end is actually doing something too. And not just sitting back, just letting their parents just pay for everything or whatever. And that's where Simone is coming from. She want them to get a job. She want them to go do something. All right. And Cecil... Boy, girl, sir, just, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I Honestly, when it comes to them and their little storyline about their kids, I'm really not interested because those are grown adults. Those are grown adults. Like, come on. If they ain't got it figured out right now, it's because y'all coddle them too much and y'all need to just let that stuff, let the cord go a little bit. You know, I'm here for the generational wealth talk, but sometimes you just got to let a person grow the freak up, especially their oldest. And that's mostly who they talking about, that oldest one. I uh, love seeing Dr. Jackie in there with the brat. And uh, I got to watch their special. Oh, my God. I forgot. It did come on this past week. And I missed it. Okay. Brat and Judy, you know, talking about their pregnancy. I love Dr. Jackie glasses in that scene. I love me some of them. The way they was looking like the infinity sign. I like those glasses. But that was cute. Um, Meanwhile, you get Phaedra. This is what I'm talking about, stunts and shows. And this is where it just became so uh with me, all right? And, again, what is she bringing besides, I guess, a couple of laughs with stuff like this and theatrics? I don't know. For those that like Phaedra, what is she bringing to the show to for you right about now? And I don't dislike her. Let's, let's be clear about that. I just don't feel like she's needed on this show, okay? We got enough with Sweet Tea being on there um, and enough if even if Quiet was on there, too. We got enough. Phaedra really doesn't add anything else to the equation, if you ask me. If you ask me, I just feel like because her scenes don't even fit. And then still, we have yet to get, get into her storyline. Do she even have a storyline besides meddling in other people's business that's already been here? No, she don't, okay? But she goes around. <laughs> she got the black car. She got two dudes, including one is the Benji guy that's supposed to be the butler. It's so dramatic. Coming out like we in a, you, a movie a movie scene or somebody finna do some espionage type of stuff, you know, all dressed in black and, and, and dropping off suitcases and stuff. And I said, what is this, the Matrix? Y'all think y'all Neo and them? What is going on? I mean, all right, all right. Um, it was just a little bit much for me. It was a little bit much. I'm not going to hit sit here and hold y'all and no, please don't take this as me hating. I'm just saying it just looks so... <sighs> It ain't the married to medicine that I'm used to. And I know they, they used to do a lot of mess. But this, I, I just don't understand it, okay? <laughs> it's just like, girl, what? And so they go over there dropping the whole church fans and stuff. It's invitation because they're going to have a resurrection uh, party or whatever for uh, quiet so that all the girls can get their thoughts out and she can apologize. Allegedly, that's what it was for. So she can apologize. They can fix some issues and all of that. And so we get that going, right? Then we have uh, Tiffany. Oh, wrong show. Who is Tiffany? That's Love and Marriage Huntsville. We have um, Toya. She got Simone and, um, you know, Sweet Tea coming over and doing some, like, revital revitalization, revitalization or whatever. That's what it felt like, like some um, spa treatments and uh, probably some IVs and all that stuff because she just came back from her honeymoon. And then they get into talking about the fact that she couldn't, she didn't have, you know, she didn't consummate the marriage with Gregory for the past, the first three days that they was gone because she was on her cycle. All right. 
And she said her cycle keep coming on, coming on, coming on, coming on. And it's irregular, you know. And um, I'm saying it's stress. That's basically what it is. All right. And at this point, this is why I will forever love Married to Medicine because it is about, you know, they have women doctors on here that are talking about women issues and especially given the fact that it is a black cast and we have, they're speaking to us because I'm pretty sure it's predominantly black women who watches this show. And yeah, we can have the foolishness, we can have the funness, we can have the drama, whatever, but we also get a little educational moment. Or we also get a reminder that you need to check up on this and check up on that and keep your health serious because at the end of the day, they are a doctor and they are giving us some information. And yeah, there's a lot of us, especially black women, like I said, that deal with things like fibroids and, you know, endometriosis and irregular periods or whatever and heavy bleeding and all of that stuff. And so therefore... I did appreciate this little conversation between Simone and um, Sweet Tea and Toya talking about that, you know, uh, telling her she probably might need to get that check and because she was under stress with this wedding and all of this stuff. Yeah, that probably got her, you know, being irregular and all of that stuff. And so she tied, they do the little, um, <clears throat> it's a shot bar. That's what it was. They doing all of that and then, you know, they notice the uh fan over there and come to find out sweet tea didn't get invited sweet tea didn't get invited and so it was like why you think phaedra didn't invite her or whatever it was like uh maybe quad was coming and then toya said well if quad is gonna be there why the hell would you think that she'll uh, invite me if quad gonna be there and i was like you know what you can still come okay i said so you just gonna invite somebody to somebody else's event and think it's gonna be okay all right so let's just get down to the event, right? You see Heavenly Alicia, Dr. Alicia. And at this point, what is, is Dr. Alicia going to get a storyline? Because she's just there. Like, she's barely a friend of the show. Because even some friends of the show got more lines than she do, all right? And I want to know where she come from. What's her story and all that, just in case I missed it, okay? Um... She'd literally just be there playing atmosphere, for real, for real. And I want to know about her. And so, you know, they in the car with Heavenly. She's in the car with Heavenly and, and Jackie. And you got Toya and um, Sweet Tea and Simone in the car. They pulling up to this funeral home. And basically, what it comes down to is it's almost midnight. Everybody is like, what are we doing here? We are at a funeral home. Of course, you got Heavenly freaking out and all this stuff. Then they get up in there. And this is where I draw. I said, child, here we go. I couldn't even laugh at it 100%. I was just like, it was just too much. I was just too much because I'm just like, what is the purpose of this? It, 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 just, it, just show, it just made the show, to me, in this sense, Phaedra just made the show goofy as hell, and then and not in a good way. And then quiet playing along with it too, because they looking around trying to figure out what's going on. Of course, Sweet Tea still feels some type of way about Dr. Heavenly, and then they just sitting on opposite sides trying to figure out what is happening. Next thing you know, uh, somebody playing music, and then here comes um, Phaedra coming out with this veil and all of this stuff. They all in black and everything, and it's just so dramatic. And I'm just sitting here like, girl, what? Girl, what? She get up there. She talking about, okay, thank y'all for being here. And when she said, I ain't going to lie, y'all, it was a couple times I did laugh. And this was one. Sweet tea, you weren't invited. But I guess you're here now. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> you can get a little resurrection too. <laughs> Oh, that was funny. Okay, Daddy didn't go laugh. She said, "Sweetie, you were not invited." <laughs> and then he was like, "You know, we got a lot of people here in our professions and they're experts and things. You know, doing big things or whatever, something to the such." She was like, "You got people here that talk about teeth, talk about vaginas, a tennis expert." I said, "A tennis expert." When they came to talking about Toya, even Toya was like, <laughs> that, that, that was the funniest part of the episode. I don't care what nobody say. I do not care. That was funny. A tennis expert. I said, your girl, you could have said something about her wang or anything, but you called her a tennis expert. 
<laughs> okay, that's funny. That's funny. Okay, and so basically, this is here for us to, um, you know, them to get whatever they need to get out. Um, you know, it's a resurrection, okay? And it's a resurrection of who? Quiet. They pull out this freaking, um, you know, coffin, and then they open it up, doing all of the whole circumstances and put on the whole show. Or, now I don't want to call it a show because if you haven't been to a black funeral, depending on which type you went to, you know, they do certain things. And that was one of the... Uh, things that they do, and I've learned about that recently by looking on TikTok and stuff. Cause I, I, I've never been to a funeral. I've never been to a funeral like that. I've been to a memorial service. I've never been to a funeral like that where the casket is just right there and all that stuff. No, and then they do all of that. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then when they opened up the casket, because they was trying to figure out who was up in it or if it was somebody in it, girl, it was quiet. You thought that you had me there? Because some of y'all counted me out at once. Give me a death sentence, but I'm here. Come on, y'all let me out of here. I said, girl, what? Now, see, at that moment, that's when I would have said, Ugh, get, let me get up out of here. Because I don't have time. I don't have time. If you know that you have issues with somebody or people in a whole group and you want to figure those out, I'm not going to take you seriously if you're doing stunts like this, okay? Because to me, that tells me that you're not taking this seriously. And you're just putting on. And that's exactly what this is. They're just putting on, okay? Everybody's sitting there confused, like, what the hell is this? And then you're sitting there, you're, 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 you're playing along with the game. And I'm just like, girl, over it, over it, over it, over it, okay? Talk about some This is if you got some issues, you want to put it to rest, or you got some strife and all that stuff, you want to bury it and all that. I was like, Jackie, you got something to say? She said, what? <laughs> Jackie was me. Jackie zoned out. Jackie wasn't paying no attention. Jackie, Jackie body was there, but her mind and soul was at home, okay? And that would have been me. Because she said, girl, what? <laughs> Meanwhile, they ring up since they got issues. The whole situation between Sweet Tea and uh, uh, Heavenly. At the end of the day, I understand Sweet Tea being in her feelings about the fact that Heavenly said that the relationship, their marriage was uh, too soon, okay? She did talk about it. She said it was too soon. That's what she was saying, all right? And then later she said she don't think it might last because of the way that Sweet Tea was acting at her. Did she need to say anything about it? No. Was she lying about it? No. Um, was it probably the wrong time that it was said? Yes. But at the end of the day, Sweet Tea, you trying to say that you was not wrong for not telling her about the, um, the, 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 the not being invited. You were. I understand being petty, but you were. Because um, you should have at least called her up and said don't show up. You could have, you could have did that. Okay, that's that's the only thing I feel like you could have did. Call the lady up and so they won't waste their time and they could go to the kids' uh, prom. That's it, that's it. But they get into it. I will whoop your ass and do this and do this. And I'm sitting here like, neither one of y'all not finna fight. Not to have me. I don't believe you can fight. Okay. And I just feel like you got a lot of mouth and you're the type of person that don't know how to fight. She said, and you up here talking about my relationship when you the one said that you had to put a frying pan, go up, go upside your husband's head with a frying pan. I said, girl, what? <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the day, at the end of the day, because when, when Choir got over there, like, Choir and Heavily had their issues because they talked over there at Phaedra House. And I understand, like, why I feel some type of way with Heavenly because Heavenly was the one that wanted the girl to come onto the show and then she taking pictures with her and all of this stuff. Okay, yeah, that, I would feel a little bit away, but at the end of the day, you know, because I'd be like, what are you doing? But I wouldn't let it get to me that much, you know? And you could just tell that they was doing this. You should know by now when it comes to this show, Heavenly especially is going to do whatever she got to do so that they can get some ratings and they can keep it going. That's literally what she said she did it for, okay? Because you see how, you know, you made it seem like you was cute with the girl and now you can't stand the girl and y'all just be talking all the mess about the girl for what? And that girl didn't even really do nothing to y'all. Tweet T, let's just be real. Sweet T ain't done nothing to none of them but Mary Greg. That's it. That is it, okay? And, um... At the end of the day, Quad 
She didn't take responsibility. She didn't take accountability. She didn't own up to the stuff that she did. She basically was there for the reason and asking basically how come y'all don't fuck with me, okay? And like everybody keeps saying, it's a two-way street. You can call people. And like others were saying, we tried to talk to you, but yet you had these moments where you don't want to communicate. So therefore, people get tired of trying to reach out to people if they're acting like they don't want to communicate and they don't want to be bothered. Okay? You contribute to this as well. And I hate a person that want to act like, woe is me. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. And that's what she was giving me in this episode. It's like everybody is coming at me. Don't nobody want to be me, my friend, and all this stuff. And I'm trying to understand where we're at and all this okay okay but you have to see what you did because they didn't just do it out of the blue they didn't just do it out of the blue you know and i'm just like oh can we get past this and you, they doing all of this and they got nowhere even phaedra was annoyed with um and disappointed and quiet because she wasn't taking respond uh, re accountability herself and it was going completely haywire it was going the wrong way then they go to the dinner to have food to the repast, I guess. And um, baby, I would have been mad that they wasted my time. <laughs> I would have been mad. And, you know, the whole situation about... <sighs> we probably going to fast forward some stuff. Because I just want to get to this part. The way that Kawhi was up there talking, like, okay, you know, um, Simone, we used to be cool. We used to be real close. I don't know how we got off that train, but I would like to move forward and get back there. Is you with that? And it's almost as if she wanted them to say yes right then and there and be like, whatever issues we had, we ain't even got to discuss it no more. It's just over. It's done with. And we're going to move on. No, no, it's not going to be like that. Who is this? That's why I said this was goofy, because if people have real problems, this is not how you do it, okay? You got a real problem with me. I got a real problem with you. We're going to sit down one-on-one, -on -one and we're going to talk about it. We're not going to do this in front of everybody. Even if we do it in front of everybody, we're not going to do it like this. And you're not going to say put stuff out there and make it seem as if I'm supposed to just say yes or no and we, we done. And, and, and problem solved. Same thing like when she started talking to Toya. And I was like, you know damn well Toya don't want nothing to do with you. You can't admit the things that you have done and, and, and your part and stuff, whether you started it or you contributed to it, to make that girl feel like, listen, and, and, and y'all know I'm not the biggest Toya fan, but Toya ain't bothered me this whole season and I'm I'm cool with it, okay? I, I'm, just, I'm just not here for the bull. I'm just not here from the bull. Both of y'all did stuff to each other, okay? But what you did, you can't admit that you literally, last year you did practically say that you feel like she possibly could have had something to do with Anila um, break-in. And you really think that that girl going to sit there and be like, okay, we can move past it. No, no, that is some, that is, that, that's unforgivable for me. You, like she said, you basically said my, we, we stole, okay. Or we, we, we were thieves and we'll set up somebody, you know, when you talked about me sleeping with this, I never talked about this and all this stuff. Y'all always talking shit about each other, but you crossed the line when you said it, that she possibly could have, both of y'all was crossing the line. Just, just put that like that. And at the end of the day, Toya and Quad don't need to be friends. Be cordial for the show. Don't need to be friends and you really don't need to interact. Case ended. Case closed, okay? I thought that that shit was so pointless, so wasteful, and so dumb. So dumb. Quad just don't... Ugh. I couldn't be Quad friend. If that's how she act, I just couldn't be her friend. I couldn't be her friend. I couldn't put up with that shit. I don't, I don't have the attention span for it. I really don't. I re Ooh, excuse me. I really don't. But anyway, y'all, we be always seeing down there in Atlanta, Willie Watkins' uh, funeral home. Have we ever seen Willie Watkins? Is Willie Watkins still with us? Have we seen somebody from the family? Because y'all getting a lot of press down there. But anyway, that was the uh, Married to Medicine. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about it. And I'll see y'all later. Y'all can tell. I'm just, this, this. Ooh, I, it's just been so much going on. And then, speaking of funeral homes, like, part of the reason why I'm just, like, kind of over it, because we still dealing with the stuff. With my, We literally just, the cremation just got done. We still got to get the death certificates. And dealing with, uh, it's just a lot. So, I'm just not really here for this dumb stuff. But anyway, y'all tell me how y'all feel. I'll see y'all later. Peace.